Welcome back to part two of Art in the Kitchen. In this video, we're gonna create art with food. That's right, you actually get to play with your food. Before you get started, you should check out the home cook, Layla Mobadai, who's from Melbourne, Australia. She runs Jacob's Food Diaries, which is a viral Instagram account known for its incredible food creations. She's created everything from a ravioli SpongeBob to a chicken and mashed potato Woody from Toy Story. She started doing this for fun to help her son eat healthier, but it ended up giving her more bonding time. You can check out her work at jacobfooddiaries.com. Here are a variety of supplies that you can use to create food art. For starters, search through your pantry for foods with a variety of shapes and colors. You can also have your parents do this for you. However, this many options is not required. You can make food art with very little. I would just use what you can find. You will want a plate to help arrange your food and some silverware to help cut the shapes. If you have any cookie cutters laying around, those would be beneficial as well. I would suggest having a variety of bowls to help you dish out the food so that you can see the variety of options that you have. Let's try out the experimental process of food art. Now that we have everything organized, let's get started. You can choose to work directly on the plate or just a flat surface. Just remember, things can get messy, so be sure to clean up after yourself. With this process, you're just playing around with the food and materials to see what you can create. You're going into it without a plan. So here's our finished result. Time for an interesting lunch. Let's try out a food art creation by planning our idea first. I plan on creating a monkey, so you'll see here that I'm sketching it out. Now I'm going to plan out how I'm going to create my monkey. Sometimes plans change, so this is just gonna be my guide. Now it's time to start. I'm gonna use this cutting board because I'm gonna use a butter knife to help me cut my ham. I'm also using a glass plate with a blue background just to help my image a little bit more. You'll notice I changed my plan a little bit and added some lettuce and pretzels for a tree and leaves in the background. The more you play, the more things you can come up with. Here's my final creation. I ended up liking it better without the body. So now you're ready to create your own food creations. Try limiting yourself. Healthier foods like fruit and vegetables or not healthy food like candy. To end our food art creations, let's try painting with chocolate syrup. Everyone knows that chocolate and love are forever tied, but what about the marriage between art and chocolate? It's a relationship that dates back to incredible decorative vessels that Aztecs created for what they considered food of gods. Or the exquisite chocolate pots used in European courts when hot chocolate was the most sought after drink. Check out this work by Tim Decker, who's an incredible speed painter. Or the work by Vic Munez, who likes to use non-traditional materials to create art. You will only need these three simple supplies, chocolate syrup, a plate, and a paintbrush if you have one. If you watched part one of the Art and Kitchen series, you'll notice that we did a coffee painting. The chocolate painting is quite similar. 
When you're coming up with an idea, you want to think about something that has a lot of contrast. That means your image is black and white. So that's why I went with a penguin. Here's my finished work, complete with an igloo and clouds. Thanks for watching part two of Art in the Kitchen. I'll see you guys next time.